There could be as many as 14 million species on our planet, but they're thought to be vanishing at a rate of 100 a day. In our Global Ideas series, we meet people who are committed to preserving biodiversity. Today, we're in Kenya on the trail of elephants. In and around the Amboseli National Park, there's a route that's been used by the majestic mammals for thousands of years. Over time, settlements grew along its path, and that's led to conflicts. Global 3000 reporter Wiebke Feuerzenger learns about a clever approach to the problem. We are with an officer from the International Fund for Animal Welfare, tracking one of 12 elephants fitted with GPS transmitters. There you are. So the guy who is looking away from the rest of them is the Kimana male. The young bull elephant is wearing a six kilo transmitter around his neck. But since he himself weighs about five tons, the animal scarcely notices it. They tend, actually, elephants tend to, especially the big boys huh, and even younger boys, because families, uh, families stick together, the matriarch and the ladies and the babies, they stick together. But the boys tend to hang out, out in small groups or big groups. So now he's in a sort of bachelor herd. So he's hanging out with the boys. And you could see they are the big boys, he's in the middle of them, and then there are the younger boys, like the guy who was running behind. He's like a little guy who is just joining the herd and learning the tricks of being a big bull in a herd of elephants. Then, uh... The elephant's migration patterns show that when he leaves the national park, he never goes farther than the border to Tanzania. Then he turns back, as if he knew that elephant hunting is allowed there. At just 390 square kilometers, the park is relatively small. But the ecosystem in which the animals from Amboseli move is about 20 times larger. About 1,400 elephants live in the Amboseli Basin. In the evening, they leave the park to find food. In the morning, they return to head for the watering holes. The same goes with the cattle of the Maasai people. Elephants and livestock tend to go together. They are both grazers, they work together. And I've seen, personally, I've seen livestock and elephants grazing together very harmoniously without a problem. The lives of the Maasai revolve around their cattle. A family's wealth is measured by the size of its herd. Even their houses are made of cow dung mixed with clay. After heavy rainfalls, the roofs have to be resealed. Times are hard. Gideon is 16 and would like to continue going to school, but there's not enough money. In this village, we come of many families. We live together in harmony, in peace, and we keep our livestock. But there is a crisis in this country, 2008, 2009. It actually caused many of life stocks to die. But earlier before the crisis, we, we, we find a mass having more than 1,000 cattle. But now it has been reduced to 10 cattle. The men tend the livestock. Everything else is women's work. Gideon's mother provides for her eight children by selling jewelry to safari tourists. With poverty come new problems. Some of the Maasai communities in Amboseli have partitioned and sold their land. Investors from Nairobi are now cultivating maize where elephants and other wild animals use to forage for food. More and more bush and grazing land is vanishing. Bernard Tulito, a Maasai himself, has been observing that development with trepidation. This is madness because the moment you sell your land and you don't have any place where you live, where you can grow, or where you can put your livestock, it is end of you. And after having all this chunk of money, huge amount of money, 
and spend on ways that are not economically viable. It led you to more problems. I've seen a, a scenario whereby one of the culprits of elephant poaching, we realize it is one of the guys who have sold his land. That's why Toledo is out visiting the villages every day. He knows the animals will only have a chance if the lives of the people improve. That means providing grants for education and creating jobs. The International Fund for Animal Welfare has trained 30 Maasai to be community wildlife rangers. On patrol, they look for evidence of wounded animals and signs of poaching. Someone has stretched thick steel wire between these trees, a lethal trap for giraffes, whose meat and hides are highly valued beyond the border. This is near for a giraffe. We got it here early in the morning. A local has had a run-in with an elephant. A wildlife ranger asks whether his state compensation has arrived. The man had climbed a tree to escape a young bull elephant. The elephant rammed the tree and buried him under it. Our job is so much more interesting than working in a safari lodge. During our training, we get to know other parts of the country. We get around and see new things all the time. At the foot of Mount Kilimanjaro, the International Fund for Animal Welfare has leased an additional 6,500 hectares from the Maasai. That provides them a regular income and protects the land from further settlement. The elephants come here to feed or use the Katendin Corridor as a transit route to reach other grazing land. In this way, even the smallest of these elephants can live to a ripe old age of 60 in safety here. <laughs>